Well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Mark Larkin. I'm the CEO of a company called Vitaxis, based in Oxford in the UK. And we're running um, a study called CMT and Me, which I'm going to give you an introduction to today. Um, so uh, we can, the plan for the this half hour webinar session is we've got 20 minutes of introduction presentation that I'll give you. Uh, and then we're leaving 10 minutes at the end for Q&A. So via the uh, webinar system, if anyone would like to submit questions now or as we proceed, uh, please do. I would love to, to, to take those questions in those 10 minutes. And if there are too many, we'd be delighted to respond to those afterwards um, you know, on social media, for instance. So, so please don't hesitate. OK, so getting right to it then. Um, Uh, what's the purpose of the CMT and me study? Well, the background is that, as many of you may know, the, the, there's little um, published research on how CMT impacts the daily lives of patients. Um, and so we're able to address that with this study. We can generate real time data because all of the studies run digitally. It uses uh, uh, people's smartphones. So we can get the, the data directly from participants, from CMT patients across the different countries that uh, comprise the study scope. Um, and with this, we're already beginning to, to understand better about CMT, to raise awareness of how the, uh, the disease affects patients and how they're currently managed. And of course, if we can do that, we may identify gaps uh, in, in CMT management and if that's the case, perhaps we can contribute to positive change to help improve care of, 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 of patients with CMT. So that's the overall purpose of the study. Um, and what I'm going to do now is give you a little bit inf of information about uh, the, the study itself. So this table gives a an overview of some of the key design aspects of the study or, or the digital registry. So the, reg so the term registry is also sometimes used for this type of study. You'll also hear things like observational study, uh, lifestyle study. So those terms are used a little bit interchangeably. So firstly, the indication of the disease. Well, it's charcot marie tooth uh, disease. Actually, um, it's a range of different types of CMT uh, are possible to, to participate in the study. Uh, we think quite a lot about CMT1A, but a lot, that's the, the biggest subgroup within the study. But actually, many other types of sub, uh, subtypes are, are eligible to pass as well. Um, it's an international study. It's observational. Observational means we don't give drug. We just observe what's going on. And it's what's called BYOD. And that means bring your own device. So we don't give out devices or smartphones that are, that are used to, to download a study app. Each participant downloads the study app for free on their own smartphone. And the study's got ethical approval. What that means is that we're, um, we, we've applied to an independent board. We've explained what we're doing. And they've given us approval that they think this is a ethically sound um, way of proceeding. So that's just one of the, a range of aspects of the study which we've designed and built in to try and provide a highly rigorous framework for this, for this study. In terms of the cohort, we've, it's adults only. Um, so you have to be 18 or over to uh, participate to provide your informed consent before, before you begin uh, as you register for the study. And so far, we've, we've, we've been delighted. We've got over 1,800, 1,800 participants in the study across the different countries that are contained within the scope. And those scope countries, as you see these flags at the top, there's the US, France, Germany, Italy, Spain, and the UK. So it's pan-European and US. And actually, that international aspect of the study is one of the things that makes it really exciting. We're able to look at uh, and ask and investigate um, the impact of CMT across those different countries and see, see, if it's, see whether we find similarities and differences. Now, when we were developing this study, um, it's very collaborative. So um, we, we co-created it with patient advocacy groups, PAGs, and with clinical key opinion leaders. So um, as we were developing this study, we in interacted and engaged with those different patient groups and, and key opinion leaders to get their input on the design. Um, and those people have been absolutely invaluable to, to design the study in the way that we have. 
Um, and the, it's it, the study is running for two and a half years. Uh, we launched the first country in October 2018, um, and um, so we're going to we're going to run through to uh, 2021. But you know, it may be extended if the, if if it's valuable, um, then the sponsor may try, may decide to extend it. But we'll see. So the, the starting point is two two and a half years of, of uh, data capture. What data, we'll talk more about the, the, the data capture, but the, broadly the, the data capture we're interested in is, is uh, several parts. One is for detailed information about participants' demographics and profile. Um, and then we also ask, as, as uh, some of you have already uh, registered will, will be familiar with, we ask a range of what's called PRO instruments. Now these are PRO, so that's a patient reported outcomes. And that, that really means a standardized questionnaire. So we use all these PRO standardized questionnaires to, to quantify, to measure the burden, the impact of CMT in, in participants' daily lives. And as you all have seen, those different standard questionnaires assess different aspects of, of CMT. So it might be quality of life, it might be how it impacts your work, yeah. sleep, cramps, a whole range of things with the idea to try and build up a really broad and, and, and granular understanding of how CMT impacts uh, patients' daily lives. It's important also for studies like this to, to understand who are the different stakeholders involved in the running of the study. So, on this slide, you see that uh, my company, Vitaxis, we're based in Oxford in the UK, and we um, running this type of study is, is, is a key part of our business. We do it through our platform called My Real World, um, and the study is also sponsored by a biotech company, a biopharma company called Farnext. They're a French company based in issy les moulineaux which is just in the uh, suburbs of Paris. And you, you've probably heard about um, um, things like scientific advisory board. Well, this study has a, a very strong governance com component. So we've set up an independent scientific advisory board. And on that advisory board, in each of the study countries, there's a clinical lead and a patient advocacy representative. So for the UK, for instance, there's a, a, a clinician and a patient advocacy group. And that, that setup will be mirrored in each of the other study countries. And we were very careful about setting up the and discussing with the board members the, the, the responsibilities of the board. And key parts of that are providing scientific advice to the, to, to the study team and, and, and ensuring the study operates the highest levels of, of academic rigor. So that board meets every six months um, and it discusses what progress in the study, um, study findings, results we've, we've found so far, and, and thinks about how we publish those, those data. You'll probably be familiar over the last uh, you know, year, 18 months, with GDPR, General Data Protection Regulation, which is a framework that um, uh, safeguards participants' rights and the use of, of personal data. Now, this study has been developed consistent with the principles of GDPR. Um, and in addition, it's been um, ethically approved by an independent review board, an IRB. The one that we use is called Salus IRB. And again, that's in, in accordance with, with best practice for running this, these types of studies. Well, after that background and, and, and um, understanding of the governance and the setup, how does it actually work? Well, the study app is available free to download. It's available on both Android and iOS uh, devi uh, devices, so you can get it from the Apple or the uh, Play uh, app stores. And once you've downloaded the app and once you've gone through the informed consent uh, procedure, you get to various different sections. And here uh, I'm showing you some screenshots. Here you, you see at the bottom there's various different um, sections of the app. There's a home screen, there's a tracker, surveys, and knowledge. Um, here on the tracker, uh, there's two parts of the tracker. There's filling in information about your medical profile, and there's recording of symptoms that you might have that are related to your CMT. Now, with that um, track information, here's a bit more detail about the medical profile. You can do this, uh, fill in this information at any time. So, you know, it's quite detailed, so you may not want to do it all, all, all at the same top sitting, but you can start off with a couple of uh, sections and then do, do the rest later, you know, as, as you please. So, the sections are about you, uh, about your CMT, 
the treatments that you're uh, using to, to with your CMT, the medical team. Who are the people who, who in your medical team that you interact with about your um, your, your CMT? So, for instance, GP, neurologist, perhaps phys physiotherapist, for instance, and then at the bottom, uh, behaviours as well. So, <clears throat> those um, uh, medical profile information. That's really important so that we're able to. Um, and all of the you know thousands of participants that we have, when they're giving us information about, for instance, how their CMT is impacting their quality of life or their sleep, it's important that we know about the, the, the profile of the patient who's giving us that information. So, um, you know, obvious uh, examples that in terms of age, in terms of subtype, for instance, but all of this other detailed information, it really helps us to give a context for the for what people how how people answer the, the surveys, which we'll come on to in a minute. Now, <clears throat> part of the CMT study and, and communicating it, uh, we use quite a lot of videos. Now, I'll just, get, I'll just start this video. Actually, this is from a Bethany, a CMT uh, patient. Fortunately, we can't hear the you can't hear the uh, the audio on this webinar, um, uh, but but so I'll just stop that quickly. But you know, videos are really important, so we use quite a lot of those. You'll see those in our social media uh, channels, and e even really short 30-second videos about explaining how to do certain aspects of the study. So do, do look out for those, um, and we've had really nice feedback. That's a nice, effective way of, of, of understanding how the certain aspects of the study work. Uh, go to the next slide. Another aspect of the um, study is a symptom diary. So I, again, under the tracker, we, we looked at medical profile. Now we've got the symptom diary here. We've got a whole range of symptoms that you can record um, as much or as, as little as you, you wish. Um, so you've got leg weakness. I mean, the, many of these are familiar to you, of course, hand weakness, difficulty breathing, et cetera, et cetera. Now, when you've recorded those, if you click on this little icon at the top, you can go to a report. Um, which says, gives you a, um, um, a summary of all the symptoms you've recorded, and here you just see a, a little part of the screenshot, and the dates. So that can be um, a really nice record of how, uh, you know, many people have told us they record symptoms already. This is a nice systematic way of, of, of doing that. And actually, we had a nice uh, bit of feedback from a, a US patient who said to us, um, my neurologist enjoys using the app as well. Um, he prints out um, a report for every appointment and feels it's a really useful tool for him to get a broad view, broad picture of how my CMT is 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 affecting me. So we were really pleased when we heard that um, uh, feedback. That's that's a nice sort of use case, if you like. Hopefully this. Uh, app is useful in a range of ways to uh, participants, not just um, a part of you know uh, furthering sort of scientific understanding of the of, of the condition. Well, how you use that, if you use that symptom tracker, that's entirely up to you. I just explained one um, example of how one patient uses it. You know, other patients may use it in, in different ways. How you use it is entirely up to you. This, um, I was just giving a bit of an insta uh, in, uh, introduction to these, the survey section here right at the bottom. When you get to the survey section, you'll see a number of different surveys that explore different um, aspects of CMT. Each of these is really just a, a, a series of multiple choice questions. So you'll, you'll take those, um, and actually there's a series of um, when we were designing the study with the, the clinicians and the patient advocacy groups, we thought quite carefully about different aspects of CMT and how we would hope to measure those. And we picked these standardized questionnaires that would measure these different areas or domains of, of the condition. Um, another question is how, it's not just a, a snapshot, but this is a, a study over two and a half years. It's a longitudinal study. So really, really valuable for us is getting these um, surveys completed at different time points. So in addition to just you seeing these, you, you'll receive uh, every so often notifications that have been kept very carefully designed so that we get data on, on, on certain to, uh, different frequencies. So some might be monthly, some might be quarterly. You don't need to worry about those frequencies. That's all done automatically in the background. But when you get those notifications, if you could uh, click through and do the survey, that is wonderful. So, And actually, even if you're 
um, you do one of these surveys one month, one month, and the answers you give are exactly the same as what you gave last year. That's still absolutely invaluable information because it shows that nothing's changed, for instance. So those, those are the surveys. Now, another um, aspect of the study that we, we, we feel is really important is, is trying to provide um, a useful experience for participants. As I said, we took, looked at the symptom tracker, which plenty of patients are telling us they'll find very useful. The knowledge section here, down bottom, the bottom right, um, gives um, some validated information about your CMT. Now, of course, many people you know, use Google finding out information about uh, medical conditions. Um, Sometimes you get information that hasn't necessarily been, uh, is, isn't necessarily the highest quality or hasn't been validated. Here, there's a knowledge section which has validated information, medically validated information about CMT, for instance. So here, we've got information about symptoms, treatments, um, and uh, a whole lot more uh, articles. And then there's another section about, uh, called about this study. Now, when you sign up to the study, you'll, you'll get the full explanation of how the um, uh, about the study set up. But you know, a few months later, you may have forgotten some of that. But rest assured, you can see all the details about the study here. There's also a series of study newsletters that we put out, and you can see um, uh, the, the, the history of those when a new one goes uh, is, is published. You'll hear about it, but it will also get uploaded to this section of the uh, app. Um, this area is called data nuggets. You know, as you'll see, we're already finding invaluable insights into how CMT impacts people in the real world. And one aspect of that is us thinking about very, very discreet, quick, um, uh, patient-centric aspects of the data that we're finding. We call those data nuggets, and I'll give you an, um, an example of uh, one or two of those in, in a second. And then finally, the study publications. As I mentioned before, the, this study is set up to really um, make sure we have data of the quality and rigor to publish in scientific journals. Now, we've already started doing that, and under this section here, you'll see many of the publications that we've already published. And again, as, as new publications are come out, there'll be links to those will, 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 be, uh, will, will appear here too. So just a little bit more about those outcomes then. So as I said, we've already started publishing the data in scientific uh, conferences, etc. So we'll, as we said right at the beginning, we want to raise awareness of, of what, what it's like to live with, with CMT, you know, right from patients living with it in, in the real world settings outside of clinical trials. And, and to show how patients are managed today and, and hopefully uh, to, to using this as a, as a means to improving that care. So, so far since the studies uh, began and was launched, we've published 13 different posters. And as you can see in these, these images here, these are members of uh, my team who have um, uh, presented these uh, posters, which are uh, at, at academic conferences um, about various di different aspects of the studies, the study. And these topics have been quite already quite uh, wide ranging. So we've had some posts about patient demographics, about treatment patterns, about uh, care standards, health resource utilization and productivity losses. And there's plenty more to come. So we've been delighted we were able to publish already, but it's part of an ongoing publication plan, if you like. So some key findings just eight months after the study. These come from an, uh, an interim analysis that we conducted. So epidemiology out of the study cohort of, of um, you know, we're going to 67% uh, women and the rest men. So it's, that's a, a bias towards women. Average weight of a participant, 77 kilos. Average age of a participant, uh, 46 years old. But actually we get quite a big range outside of that, that average. So a lot older and a lot younger as well. Those are just the average uh, numbers uh, presented on this on this page. Symptoms, now here we've got a couple of graphics. These are these data nuggets that I mentioned before. So top one is about, um, says that participants in the CMT and the app um, study rank their CMT symptoms by importance. And when we did that, the um, hand and foot impairment uh, characteristic of CMT and, and me, the, 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 the weakness in hands and fingers came across as the, the most common with uh, the others you see their difficulty walking, weakness in the feet and fatigue. But we had a whole load of other symptoms as well, but those are just the, uh, the, the most, um, most important ones. And then the, the, the lower part of the screen was about 
um, other medical conditions that accompany CMT in me. Now, as, as many of you will be very familiar with, CMT is often accompanied by other medical conditions. And this is what the study cohort told us. So depression was the biggest one, uh, along with anxiety, and then, but also gastrointestinal problems, some respiratory problems, and you know, the, the you know, range of other medical conditions as well. So being able to get those data and, and, and explore those, publish those, and also feed those back to study participants, um, is very, very important. Participants often tell us that one of the key motivators for, for them of being involved in a study like this is tell us how it's going. If you're finding some useful things, tell us, because that's a real motivator. So these data nuggets are, are a way of doing that. Um, some information about symptoms and diagnosis. So on average, pa participants with CMT 1A um, reported that this first symptom started at the age of 17. OK, um, and on average, it was 10 years later that they were at first diagnosed with CMT1A. So a big gap, 10 years between um, uh, symptoms and diagnosis. But again, so perhaps raising awareness of the, um, of the condition may lead to uh, shortening of that, that, that long period. A bit more about diagnosis then. <clears throat> um, we asked uh, people how a diagnosis is usually performed. Um, and we've got um, some information about ex the key ones, examination by doctor or neurologist, um, and blood tests and, and electrical tests as well being the key ones, but really some variability there as well. Um, um, and I'm just going to get, just in the interest of time, I'm going to move ahead a little bit quickly because I want, do want to make sure we have time for our, our Q&A. Um, we've got some information about treatments and um, uh, people using phys physical therapy, medicines, uh, uh, et cetera, that you see there. But, um, uh, one of the key things that we found was, uh, and, and again, many of you will be familiar with this, of course, but the importance of ankle and leg braces, 40% of participants, participants reported that, that they use those. And finally, this is for the UK, um, what type of uh, medical support uh, are, are people using? So we did this across uh, different countries and the different colored bars show the different countries in the study. So for instance, Germany is in this uh, aquamarine. But what we found in the UK, so number one was the, the, the doc, family doctor, the GP and neurologists, number two, orthotists and, and podiatrists, and then physical therapists, number three. So these are really just a snapshot of the wealth of, 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 of information and data we're already generating. Um, Impact on quality of life is, of course, uh, so important to patients. Um, and we've got a range of aspects of this from fatigue, from pain, from sleep, right through to disabilities. I mean, you know, just on this aspect, we could we could talk for another half hour really exploring the detail that is coming out of the study. But, you know, plenty to plenty to go on. Uh, cramps as well, falling, productivity. So hopefully this range of uh, domains gives you an idea of how broad and how granular this study already is and what an uh, you know, excellent opportunity it is to raise the awareness of how uh, CMT impacts participate, participants in their daily lives. So went through those for final uh, couple of slides relatively quickly just to make sure we've got some time for Q&A. So I'm going to ask um, my colleagues uh, Sam and Coralie who are also on the on the call if they have any questions that have come in from the participants. Yes thank you Mark can you hear me okay? Yes yeah thanks yeah. Sam. Cool um, yeah so one question's come through just asking if um, a participant can be logged into the app on multiple devices? Yes, yeah, great question. Yeah, of course, you, that, the, and the answer is yes. Um, you, you, that, there's no problem with that. Um, the the study's been designed really for smartphone, um, op optimised in the lingo, uh, for, for, for smartphones, so Apple or Android. You can log in on, a, on a, an iPad as well. You may see some um, glitches where it's not being optimized as, as um, and the experience isn't isn't as perfect as, as it is on on smartphones but it, it will work okay and then just another question as well asking if caregivers of CMT patients are able to take part in the study no for the moment that's not that they, they can't we we do recognize that caregivers have a really important role to play in the in the, in the care of patients with with cmt 
but for the moment, um, it, it's just patience, I'm afraid. Okay, and then another one as well, asking, uh, I, I know you've touched on this already um, a bit, but uh, sort of what are, what are the benefits of taking part in this study? Yeah, and we, we, we do think about that quite a lot. So the benefits are um, some of the tools that we've built in, that, that um, again, all those tools, are, the use of those tools are optional, of course, but um, I, I showed you the, the knowledge section you've got, so that's nice to have that validated information. You know, if you're taking a smartphone around, you can, you know, it's nice to know you've got that reference with you. The symptom tracker where you can build up that um, nice record of, of, of symptoms that if you want to, you can share with your clinician, you can share with your family, your friends, whoever you may wish to. So those tools are hopefully uh, valuable as, as means of um, uh, you know, managing your CMT in some way. And of course, beyond that, there, this is a this is a, a a scientific study. So, contributing to the better understanding of CMT, we said right at the beginning that unfortunately, despite CMT being quite a common rare disease, there are still gaps in understanding. And studies like this are really valuable way of of improving that and addressing that. So, um, you know, here getting getting your voice heard as part of the CMT community. So we recognise that participation in, in um, these sorts of studies is a very personal thing, but hopefully we, we, we have put together something that is individual on a, is useful on an individual basis. And you know, collectively, we're doing something that's very, very um, valuable to the CMT uh, community. We talked about, we didn't really get onto the to data access, but we mentioned at the, the Independent Scientific Advisory Board, I should also say that any uh, academic researchers who wish to access the um, anonymized aggregated data set, remember your personal identifiable information is kept secret at all times, but you, the data do contribute to a, a, a combined um, database. If academic researchers wish to use that um, uh, anonymized data set for their research, they're free to do so. So that's a really valuable, useful resource for the CMT academic community that you would be com contributing to as well. Yep, so there was just another question as well, Mark, um, that, that I'll answer because I've got the, the number in front of me. So it was asking how many participants we have to date in the UK. Um, and the answer to that is 463 um, and growing. Um, so we're really pleased with <laughs> yeah. the numbers at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, and we've we you know we've had a great response to this webinar as well. So maybe um, if if some of uh, people who are listening in aren't uh, registered so far, maybe we could get to 500 in the UK pretty quickly after this webinar. Fingers crossed. Okay. Um, and we'll just do one more super quick. Um, so just asking. Um, when can people expect findings of the study to be published? Yeah, well, findings are already being published. Um, as we mentioned, within the study app, you will see um, in, uh, in, in the um, knowledge section about this study, there's a whole list of the publications that have already been published. And we've got an ongoing um, publication plan. So as new study, as new publications get published, they will appear there. But also, if you follow the study on any of the social media, when there's new uh, publications coming out there, we, we try and make as much um, noise about them as well. Because, you know, there's, as we've said, this is a collaborative, it's a transparent study. So raising, if anything we can do to raise awareness with those publications as well, um, so much the better. Okay, uh, so I think we can um, wrap it up there, Mark, if, if everything's okay yeah. there from your end. Well, yeah, absolutely. So once again, thank you all the participants today who've taken the time to, to sign up for this webinar. Thank you for those existing participants in the study for, for your contribution so far. We've been through questions. If you have any other questions, please do get in contact with us. We, there's, a, there's an email address, cmt at vitaccess.com. Um, and we've got various social media channels dedicated to CMT and me. If there are additional questions we didn't get a chance to go through now, we will respond to those um, on social media 
after this session. So many thanks and have a great weekend. Bye-bye.